Anyone of the contrary opinion? You are free to unmute your mic and say aye. Aye, it was too short. Uh. The week was short, Tuba. Hey. The week of spiritual emphasis. It was short. Not the week. Not the week. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I believe the programs were quite interesting. Um, I just want to give us a recap of what we had uh, throughout the whole week. I'll share my screen. Thank you, Tony, for allowing me to do that. Now, um, on the first day, we had Faith Gore. I don't have her poster here, but uh, the next day, that was day two. Day two, we had. Don't worry if, if pop ups come here, that is someone's WhatsApp, not mine. So I'm sorry. Day two, we had. No, day one on Sunday, we had Leading God's Way with Pastor Andrew. Just to be seen, madam. With Pastor Andrew. Thank you so much for um, taking us through Leading God's Way. Day two. Hey, no technology. Pardon? Andrew, Pastor? Tuba? I'm here. Yeah. Oh, you were saying something. No, I wasn't. Okay. Day two, we had God's Battle Axe with Michael Likuluta, and we, we really got to understand how we can be used as God's battle axe. Day three, we had relationship stories. This had a following with Pastor Mayua, and we got to understand quite a bit about relationship stories and why some people are still single. And uh, yeah, we decided the group should uh, create a uh, and and about how to strategically, I believe they we are in which day? They what was I created for? Day four we had what was I created for by Daring Guanzura, and I do believe that we all got to understand at least what my purpose is. It's not my wealth. It's not it's not the things that I own, but it's what did really God, what did God create me for? Day five, we had, uh, let's talk about it with our lovely Nompilo Latswayo. And we had the same, on the same day, we were having our prayer fasting. And I believe quite a number of requests were answered on this day. And quite a number of testimonies should come from our experiences through uh, on the day of prayer and fasting. Uh, personally, I had a good and great experience on that day. Um, day five or day six. Day six, we had single and satisfied uh, our one and only Pastor Collins Oyamo. And yes, we were told that even if you are single, there's still so, so much more you can do. So, so much you can do your time and not wallow in loneliness. Um, as you continue to serve God for at his own opportunity, we will be able to bless you with a uh, perfect match or your perfect dream. And then uh, yesterday we had God give, give one gives, and Pastor Aiza was uh, able to present to us clearly uh, the beauty about our gifts, our talent, the fact that even if we try our very best to give something, it can never match up to sacrifice God gave when he he died for us on the cross. And today we have our one and only faith girl. We had Pastor Andrew and later on we'll be having Dr. Michael. And uh, today someone was about his way, not mine, get something out of it that at the end of the day, it's always about what God has planned for us and not what we have planned for ourselves. And with this a short recap, um, I am going to open the floor. I will allow Gary and Nompi and Andrew to just reintroduce themselves once more to 
probably give us give us an experience of how it was sharing uh, sharing with us during this week of prayer online. Uh, Monty has just left. I believe give us a testimony of what your experience was talking to us, and if you were able to join us through the week, um, what was the experience as well? What did you get from the other speakers? And as they do that, I hope we are preparing our ourselves to be also give our own testimonies, to also ask our questions, and to be able to follow through the whole program. We have at least 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes for this as we wait for uh, Dr. Mike to also join in. Um, I think I'll begin with Gary. He was here quite early. Then Andrew will follow suit. And as Nompi joins, we'll also give her an opportunity to do the same. Gary, you're welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. OK, thank you very much. Uh, and greetings to everyone. It's good to be with you once again today. Um, so for me, it was a pleasure to be able to present before you, which is, it's amazing how God brought that about. Uh, to uh, can give you the details if you want the details. But uh, for me, it's, it's, it's a journey that I've been on. Um, with the link that she, she, she shared on the, on the platform on what I'm writing on Cora, it, it was literally a personal journey that I was sharing with you. You know, in life, sometimes there are, there are things that you get to a point where you start asking yourself, so why am I here? And, and, and like I said in the presentation, most of the time it's because of adverse conditions in your life. And you start, you think you have made it in life or you think you are where you want to be and all of a sudden things change. And what I've, I've learned through the whole process is ultimately to trust God because he is in control. Uh, we need to be able to, <laughs> to, to realize that all these other things that we find in our lives um, are, are just accessories to what we are supposed to be doing. So God made people. As I mentioned in the, in, the, in the presentation, we were made by love for love. So if I'm not loving the next person, if I'm not uh, doing what is good for the next person, I'm failing my purpose. And, and the, 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 the thing is, it's so simple that it, it almost seems insane. If you were to say that to anyone else who doesn't believe in God, even people who believe in God actually, they think, no man, I, I can't have been born just for that. But ultimately, if you take a look at where we are going, that's what heaven is going to be about. That's what the new earth is going to be, going to be about. Ellen White says it clearly on how we'll keep digging deeper into the love of God and we'll keep growing into loving him more as we see it. Um, so it was a pleasure and thank you for that opportunity. Uh, I believe it was God led and it, it, it spoke to me. I listened to a number of the other presentations as well. And I'm grateful to see what young people are doing in this day and age. And my encouragement is let's keep doing what we are doing. Let's keep uh, allowing God to lead our lives and, and let's finish the work. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gary. It was also a pleasure having you on board and thank you for accepting our invitation to speak to us. And we do believe people are blessed. Um, people are blessed and we do believe that your speaking will go a long way. Whatever, may God continue to bless you with creativity, even as you continue to write in Quora and, uh, and, and all the other areas and all the other avenues that he uh, opens for you to be able to reach out to his children. Um, thank you so much. Andrew? Thank you for having me again this afternoon. Uh, and thank you, Gary. After Gary's presentation, a friend of mine messages me privately and she says, I'm guessing you enjoyed today's presentation because I'm the guy who talks about purpose all the time. Uh, and so to have that presentation, I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for sharing, Gary. Um, so my names are Andrew Piri Abiud. Sometimes that's how the, my names appear 
on on social media and and and, and other places i am what am i i am a working man I don't know what, where I fit in. I'm a working man. God called me to ministry at some point. Um, so some people call me pastor, but I work with wood at the moment. Not at the moment. I always work with wood. Um, so Tuba, Tuba is, is, I don't know if you, were, if you were attending the day she was explaining. She's that friend who we connect, we talk, we talk, we talk, and then we give each other a break and then we reconnect. So we reconnected recently, and then she mentioned um, uh, the spiritual week of emphasis or week of spiritual emphasis, um, and then invited me to to come and share. It's been wonderful, um, especially in these unique times. It's been wonderful just connecting with people, um, even over the internet, uh, and getting to see new faces. Um, that's that's been that's been fresh and 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 great for me, um, and I've learned a lot too. I really really I've learned a lot in the course of of listening to all the other sharing. Thank you for having me here tonight today. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you for uh, accepting to be with us severally. Uh, even before the spiritual week of emphasis, uh, week of spiritual emphasis. Yes, thank you so much for 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 being for being around. Now, um, we are grateful and we pray. I I am a lover of wood and woodwork. I don't know how I'll be able to learn, but I pray that God continues to bless you with with your with with the work that you do. I love your profile picture already that would work i think i'd love to have something of the sort maybe i'll reach out even if you can't come to kenya we'll we'll work it out um we, we, we could probably do the, the teaching online ah, I'll show you how to do it online better <laughs> even better i think that is that is an idea thank you so much pardon tubes you now want to crash my course I am signing up. I said I am signing up. Oh. See if Caroline says she's signing up. I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Caroline already has a screenshot of it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> this is interesting. But thank you so much, Andrew, for, for, for your presence. We highly appreciate you. Now, we had several musicians in the course of the week. And to just give us a recap of what we had is AGM. I believe they are here and they are ready to bless us with at least an item. And even as they do so, I'm requesting that you drop in your questions. I believe Gary and Andrew will be able to handle as many questions as will come. The areas where they are not so confident in handling or they are not able to, I believe we have individuals in the platform that will be able to at least assist in the questions. But please drop in the questions in my private chat or just drop them in the chat box chat box and if you also want to ask them directly i'll give you the opportunity to unmute your mic and ask the questions directly a gm james a gm hi people am i am i here Huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, they are here. AGM, we are ready for you. Please uh, give us two items as we move on to the question and answer section. You can also introduce your leader and yes. A GM, we are ready for you when you are. Hello. Hello, hi. 
Hi, how are you? We are well, and you? We are fine. Okay, we can hear you guys clearly. Thank you. Yeah. So we, we just joined in and we are wondering if we are going to sing or there's another program going on. Yes, we. I have just called you guys for two items. Oh, okay. Okay. Jema isha tunayo ishi wa Kristo Yala mpendeza mungu Yale yote duya wazayo Tutendayo maisha ni Jetu na itwa jina gani Amina, Amina, you guys are very clear when you are approaching the end and we are grateful. One more item. Familia kumcha mungu. If that is translated to English, it will be a family that mcha. Uh, Honors God. Fears God. Honors God. Honors God. God. Yes. Yes, for those who did not understand the Swahili bit of it. AGM, you're welcome.
have been a blessing to us the whole of this week we praise god for your ministry we pray that you may continue to advance you may continue to speak to people in tanzania that they may continue to listen to god's word through your music thank you so so much um i believe you are still with us till the end of the session we will give you another opportunity to at least bless us with another, with another item right now we are having Amen. a Amen. 
we are having our Q and A, and I already have my first question. I don't know uh, who will handle it, either Gary or Andrew, or you guys can agree. But the first question is, what do I do when I am struggling to pray? What do I do when I am struggling to pray? Let me just read the two questions, then you guys will agree who will take which question. Then the other question is, I have had fellow, ad I, in other areas, oh, I have had fellow Adventists say that they dated out they dated outside Christian circles and they married and they're happily married. I have been asked what if a person is part of God, what if a person who's outside my faith is part of God's plan for me? Yes. So those are the two questions. One, what do I do when I'm struggling to pray? And two, um, in light of people have married outside their faith and they are happy, they're happily married, what if the person who's outside my faith is part of God's plan for me? Do I still hold myself back or do I let myself go? And um, do I let myself go to go and, and be happily married to this person? Yes. Andrew, Gary, you guys can agree between yourselves and pick each a question and answer. The rest of us are also allowed to put in our comments on the same topic. Thank you. I'll ask the pastor to go first, then I will come. Thank you. Okay. Um, if you will allow me to answer the second question, the one about relationships. Um, and I want to acknowledge, first of all, it's coming from a very sincere heart for the question to be asked. Um, just two weeks ago, I, I posted on my, my WhatsApp and I said, leave the Philistines alone. Uh, and I didn't mean it in any way to degrade or uh, as a derogatory uh, reference, but the, I, I understood um, that when Paul was saying, do not be unequally yoked, there was wisdom in what he was saying. Um, so I, I guess an invitation I would make to the, the person that, that, that is uh, asking the question is for them to evaluate their life and their purpose. Uh, where are they going? Uh, and evaluate this other person um, who's, who, who they would want to walk with. Understand the dynamics that are coming at play because um, spirituality is a huge part in relationships. There are people who we see married and we say they're happy. We don't live with them in their homes. Um, we don't go to the bathroom with them. Um, we see pictures on, on WhatsApp and, 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 and Facebook and Instagram, and we perceive that they are happy. And we don't know what their understanding of their own path is. So to make a conclusion that they are happy and, and, and perceive that you too would be happy, I think it can be a very flawed and very dangerous um, conclusion to say I would be happy too. Uh, so evaluate what your purpose is, understand. So come close to God to understand what your purpose is uh, and where you're going. Um, and then evaluate the people that come alongside you to see if you would be going in the same direction because marriage isn't just about having a male in the house or a female in the house. If that was all that marriage was about, a lot many of us would be, would be married by now. Um, but marriage is about much more. And, and personally, I, I, I like to say marriage is about a kingdom purpose. So if I'm not pushing a kingdom agenda with someone, why am I walking with them? And that's why Paul um, says, do not be unequally yoked um, with unbelievers, be, not, not for any other reason or not because he just didn't like them, but that you, you get sidetracked from what God has called you to do when you unite yourself in, in such a manner uh, with somebody who doesn't have the same uh, goal in mind with you. I hope that helps. Thank you, Andrew. Um, I hope the person who asked that question is answered, but we are also free to uh, bring in a comment or two. Anyone with something to say on the same? 
this is your opportunity before we close on that on that question matters relationship matters marriage are always very um critical and we always try to do our best to justify the things that we do so that we fit into this plan or we want god to fit into our plan um but yes more comments are welcome on the same anyone gary's hand is up yes gary um thank you i just want to comment on this on this particular one on relationships uh, which is it's, it's it's something i'm i'm passionate about and it's a, it's a critical thing so i i will be a bit a bit open about it it's something i've done uh playing on the outside um of 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 the church or being with someone who i clearly know is not a a, a believer so i'll be i'll be honest and open with you um this is something that happened quite a number of years ago but i was in a a, a relationship where this person did not believe in god uh but let me put it this way they were not necessarily they were not out of the church so just to put a disclaimer there this pers- the person that you 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 end up with or you decide you want to be with without god uh, does not necessarily an unbeliever does not necessarily need to be outside the church they can be in the church this person i was with was in the church i can imagine if they had been outside but this person was in the church but already we had differences in what we believe and just a simple uh, a simple uh, illustration who do you run to when things are not working out i was with someone who didn't uh, well with their mouths they would they would tell you about prayer but when it came to the difficult times when it came to the difficult times uh, <laughs> their first response was not prayer and that can cause serious serious turmoil in the house uh it got to a point where one of the times i i i found some roots in in part of their belongings and i asked myself what are you doing with roots and i was given a uh, very not satisfactory answers but then you realize that people will go and find things that make sense to them and it's very important that ultimately in a relationship i can tell you now from my experience and it's not just one it's numerous experiences where i've realized that if i every time i made that decision on my own i i suffered for it and not because god wanted me to suffer but i had to deal with the consequences of my choice so my advice to to the person asking is don't don't directly go against what you know god doesn't want and let's not as young people let's not do uh, a relationship evangelism uh, there there are people who tell you yes they got married and the other partner was outside the church and they are happily ever after like like my pastor said you don't live in that house um i've served as an elder at my church for a number of years now and i can tell you now the last thing you want to be involved in is in marital counseling of people who are in a marriage outside when we see them holding hands at church everything looks fine but on the inside they are dying don't be misled by what we portray or what people portray on the outside when you are in the bedroom even the children might not know but there is chaos so my advice is follow god follow god from my personal experiences that is the best route it may seem to be taking long like we were speaking during the week on singleness and what not you would rather be single than be wrongly married uh, may may yeah let me let me stop there for that one thank you you got me at you'd rather be single than be wrongly married <sighs> Yes, d- during the week we 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 studied about single and satisfied. Um to some it was it was yeah okay you can be single and satisfied to some I cannot handle being single. But we we pray that God gives us the grace 
God gives us the grace to to be able to follow his will even when it comes to matters relationship. Nompi, you're welcome back. Sorry about the network issues. I hope you'll be able to follow through. I want to direct this question to you. Dr. Mike Karibu, we are just uh, welcome. We are just continuing, continue, continuing with a small Q&A session and then we will invite you to speak to us. Mm -hmm. Nompi, the question I'm directing to you is, what do I do when I'm struggling to pray? Um, yeah, Brenda, <laughs> I was not expecting that question. Um, I'd, okay, so I, I like to share from my personal experiences because I think there's no better launching pad for me to share. Um, so when I'm struggling to pray, I do the little that I can in that space. So even if it means me being as brutally honest as saying, Lord, I am struggling to speak to you right now. I think that alone opens up the channel of communication. And when we admit our weaknesses to God, then he can assist us. If we are struggling and we keep it to ourselves, there's no way that God can help us. So when I'm struggling to pray, it's just about saying, Lord, I really want to talk to you, but I'm having a hard time. Or at worst, Lord, I really don't want to talk to you right now because I'm upset. And that alone has already opened up the lines of communication. So I think communication as it applies to human to human, even when it comes to us speaking to God, the principles are the same. It's only that maybe in a situation where it's communicating with God, it's even better because he's in a position to help. He's in a position to give me a solution to my challenge, to my problem that I'm having. Thank you, Nampi. Thank you for the answer. I'll, I'll give two more people a chance to give a comment on the same. Marcel says prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. And this is something that has always been spoken of over and over again. Um, it only becomes hard when you and your friend are also having issues. Then, then this, 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 this statement uh, kind of, kind of tries to be to take at all order on you. But at the end of it all, it's opening your heart to God as to a friend. I'll give two more people an opportunity to say something about what do I do when I'm struggling to pray. You can raise your hand, you can unmute your mic and just talk. Yes, Dr. Mike. All right. Hi, everyone. Good to be here. Um, I, I just want to agree what's, with what Sister Nompi said. Uh, one of the things that I have learned in my journey with God is, is that we need to be sincere with him. You know, we, uh, as Adventists, we've grown up to call God, you know, very nice names, big names, you know, say very nice things. But um, I remember a story, and you probably have heard it, story of um, a girl who was asked to bless her food, and, you know, it was vegetables, and she didn't like the vegetables, and, you know. Uh, you know, she, she said a prayer, something like, you know, thank you, Lord, for this food, even though I don't like the vegetables, you know. And that reminds me that God wants us to have childlike faith. And part of childlike faith is being real, telling God, you know, honestly how we feel. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, what Sister Nompi said, you know, telling God, Lord, right now, I don't feel like like talking to you. You know, God is big enough to handle it. You know, to, he's big enough to take our shouting, our crying, our anger. You know, he, it, it makes him happy when he hears our heart as opposed to some sort of sugar-coated uh, fake prayer. You know, something that's not really coming out from our hearts. The Bible says the Lord is near to those who call upon him, who call upon him in truth. 
Uh, I think that's Psalm 145, um, 17 and 18, somewhere there. Okay, so, you know, I, reading the Bible, you have Psalms like David, you know, uh, and some other Psalm is saying, you know, Lord, you know, punish my enemies, you know, impre imprecatory prayer Psalms, as they are called in theology. You know, Habakkuk saying, how long, O oh Lord, will, will wickedness and you know continue to prosper you know these were these were people in the bible telling god that they are hearts you know um um uh i think it was hezekiah who, who when he was told he was going to die you know turned to the wall and spoke to god you know frankly so when you don't feel like praying tell god you don't feel like praying you know talk to him tell him he appreciates that, and uh, it, it goes a long way. That's uh, what I would like to contribute. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Mike. We, I know we all want friends who are real with us, and yeah, God also wants us to be real with him. One more person. Gary's hand is up. Yes, Gary. Uh, thank you for giving me for speaking too much. Um, this is one of the topics that is dear to my heart as well. Um, if we remember when when Nombi um, presented, she mentioned how prayer is a conversation with God. What I've realized in my own life, the most, the 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 biggest part of my life, the largest part of my life, I, I had been not having a conversation as such. I'd been telling God what I want and not literally just going to get what I want or just demanding what I want rather. It was not even a conversation. And by it being a conversation, I, I like what the, the uh, pastor mentioned now. God can handle my tantrums. So sometimes what you need to do is shout because you are angry for whatever reason. Uh, in the Adventist church, uh, I've realized that a lot of the times we are told to respect God and what not not, and we think that shouting is 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 disrespect. God can handle that. Uh, let me be clear. God can handle my shouting because what He wants is honesty. I'll actually be dishonest if I feel like shouting and I don't. If I feel like like throwing a tantrum and I don't. God can handle every aspect of who Gary is. God can handle every aspect of who you are. So let us, let us, let us be honest and open as possible. Like uh, Nompi mentioned, it, it opens that channel. So I'm, I'm one of those people who sometimes I don't have the words to say, but I want to cry. Cry if you must. Remember, there's that song that says, tears are a language that God understands. And, and, and the Bible also says in Psalms that God collects your tears in a bottle. God, God knows these things. He, he can handle them. So when you find it difficult to pray, if you need to cry, cry if you must. Um, God can, can, can handle anything. And you, for me, what I've realized in my life, I'd rather run to God than to anywhere else. Um, I'd rather tell it to God than to anyone else, because ultimately he's the only one who can do anything about my situation, especially giving a lasting solution. So in those tough times, if you can't say anything, write it down. If you can't write it, cry. If you can't cry, think about it, because even my thoughts, he knows them. So ultimately, just be honest and open. Um, yeah, let me leave it there. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I will, I will continue with the, that trail of prayers first before I move on to the other questions. Um, muscle to everyone, uh, Psalms 56 verse 8, Thou tellest my wanderings, put thou my, te put thou my tears in thy into thy bottle, are they not in thy book? Uh, thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. There's a question on the same line of prayer uh, from Beryl. Now, there's a question in the same line. Sometimes you can just sit with a friend without talking. Could this happen even in prayer moments? Yes. 
anyone is free to answer this. Sometimes you could sit down with a friend without talking. Could this happen even in prayer moments? Yes, anyone. Dr. Mike, uh, Gary, Nompi, Andrew. Tuba's hand is up. Also. Whose hand? Tuba's hand is up, Gary's hand. Okay, and who else? I think I hand is up. You can go Wait. before me. Yes, yes. Tuba, then Gary. Um, I don't know how my hand got up, but let me just answer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I personally can't imagine a conversation where I sit next to, to Nombi and there is silence because we generally just talk about everything and anything. But thinking about uh, Job and his friends in that moment when you've got nothing to say, I, I'm pretty sure we can sit in silence with God and God understands. Just like tears are a language. I'm sure silence is a language that God also understands. That, that's my thought. Thank you. Gary? Uh, I'll, I'll allow the other pastor as well. I, I think his hand was up as well. Uh, thanks, Mike. Gary. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Brenda and uh, Tuba for the answers. Um, one of my favorite texts when it comes to prayer is um, Romans. It says that the Holy Spirit prays for us in our weakness and he intercedes for us with groans that cannot be uttered. You know, that is one, that is one of my go-to texts um, most times, you know, when I am, you know, stressed, I am, I'm shaken, I'm, I'm fumbling with words or as the question, the one who asked the question says, sometimes you're not even sure what to say. Or uh, like Gary said, all you can do is just cry because it's overwhelming. You know, I love that text because it's encouragement that God knows the thoughts of your heart and he knows what you need and he, the Holy Spirit can express you know, beyond what words can say, you know, uh, our feelings. And, you know, that is just such a blessing. That is, that is grace. You know, grace is every gift of God. And one of the gifts of God that I appreciate so much in prayer is that the Holy Spirit helps me when I pray. Even when I can't say anything, he, he knows what my thoughts are. He knows what my needs are. And he's able to express them, you know, take them to the throne of grace for me when I'm not able to say anything. So, so you know, yes, you can sit in silence, of course, in your thoughts. I think Gary had mentioned that in your thoughts, you know, without even saying anything, God knows your thoughts. And so the answer is yes, even in silence, when you're overwhelmed. Uh, and it's just you and your thoughts and your tears, the spirit of God is present to help um, us when we pray. Thank you. Amen. Amen to that. Thank you. Yes, Gary, you can give your input. Okay. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I want to give an example. Um, my answer goes hand in hand with what everyone else has said. And the answer is yes, you can be in silence. I'll give an example. Um, some years ago, I had a friend, a female friend of mine, who for, for, for countless times, we could just sit and not speak. Just sit and, 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 and I would come from there feeling satisfied that I was with my friend. So I'm, I, I, I'm to the largest extent an introvert. You may want to dispute that and a number of people will try. But that, that's what I am. I'm normally quiet um, and reserved. And for me, it's, it's, a, it's a safe space to be. And out of those encounters where I mentioned of my friend, where I could sit, we could literally sit and not say anything. 
for hours on end and I would come from there feeling satisfied. I believe it's the same thing we can do, do with God. So for me with God, what, what that entails, this, this topic that, we are, that I presented on, on purpose, it, it came out of one of those um, moments, those times where I, I would sit, uh, I've probably prayed and, and God just prompts me to sit and, and say nothing. And out of me sitting and saying nothing, ideas and, and thoughts would start coming into my mind. And I believe it's God himself through the Holy Spirit who was bringing these things. That's how that series on, on, on uh, purpose came about. So uh, I love a, a preacher named uh, Pavel Goya. He mentions how a lot of the times we, we are so quick, even Ellen White mentions it, we are so quick to, to get off our knees and, and not sit in silence to, to hear a response from God. So God does speak, uh, in case you are asking. God does speak and, and he prompts us through his Holy Spirit in our minds. And for me, that is something that has been real. Out of my writing and uh, some of the things I speak about, they come out of, out of those moments. So yes, you can sit and be still and, and, and come out of there satisfied better than when I, I would have been saying something to God. Sometimes God just needs my silence so that he can speak with that still small voice. Thank you. Amen. Amen. He listens to our hearts. Yes, even when we have nothing to utter from our mouth. Uh, I think I will close the section of prayer with that, then I'll move on to leadership before I come back to relationship. Uh, I think, how, Tubes, how many more minutes do we have? Uh, huh. Oh, wow, our time has moved. Um, let's give it 10 minutes. Okay. There's a question. How do I follow a leader? Hey, where has that question gone? How do I follow a leader who is hard to follow? I'm looking for it so that I, yes. How do I follow a leader who is difficult to follow? I don't know who's in the best, the best position to handle the leadership section. I don't know if it's Timo or Gary or Andrew or Dr. Mike or Nompi, but how do I follow a leader who is difficult to follow? So is anyone raising their hands? No. But maybe don't. Okay. Yes, there is. Gary is up. Okay. Uh, Gary, kindly. I believe and Pastor Andrew and Pastor Mike, Dr. Mike will have something as well as non Thank you for the opportunity once again. I, I, I wanted to throw Pastor Andrew under the bus because he's the one who presented on this. But anyway, I'll say something before. Um, <laughs> a lot of the times we, 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 we want to, what can I say? We want to think that always the leader is the one who knows it all and um, what can I say? It knows the way the way to go but what i've realized in my own personal life i've, I've worked with very difficult people uh, who were my leaders and and one of the things that god has prompted me in my life is and made me realize is <laughs> sometimes yes you may have a leader but sometimes the leader is supposed to learn from you so my reaction to what the leader uh, 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 may be saying or may be lead the direction they may be leading uh, will, will also have an effect on them. So Ellen White speaks about how each one of us has an influence. Just the fact that I am alive, it means I have an influence whether I like it or not. So as a follower, yes, you may have a leader, but as a follower in your own respect, you are a leader in the sense that you have an influence on all those people around you. So yes, the leader in quotes, who may be placed there as a, as, a, as, a, as, as a person who wears a position is influenced by you. So the, the, the onus is now on, on Gary. Uh, Gary, as a follower, what influence am I 
<laughs> am I having on the on the leader? Am I, am I, and also, am I being honest with them? So sometimes it's, it's easier to speak about a leader who's doing wrong when you've never confronted them. And by confrontation, I'm not meaning you go and shout at them and whatever, but go and have a discussion with someone. Sometimes people have no clue. Uh, lead, they, they, they say, people say, or it's said that leaders are not born, they are, they are, they are made. So it's only fair that where you see a, a particular person going wrong, do your, 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 your best to go and, and, and speak with them, which, which emphasizes on relationship. So you and I have an influence. If we have a leader that is going in the wrong direction or a leader that is difficult to follow, let us be honest and open enough, first of all, to let them know. And let us also realize that our own actions have an influence on them. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Yes, and Pastor Andrew. May I just uh, add on to what Gary shared? Uh, I'm going to be reaching uh, using this verse. I know it's a stretch, but I hope that it drives the point home. Uh, I believe it's First Peter chapter three, verse one, coming down. Peter is writing to wives of unbelieving husbands. Now, I, I said I'm going to be reaching because it's not directly addressing leadership, but um, he says to the, 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 the wives to submit to, to their husbands, uh, even if they do not obey the word. The, then he says that they, having not the word, may be worn or converted, uh, by the conduct of their wives. Um, and I think that that, that, that contributes well to, to what Gary just shared, that uh, you as one who is under this leader has got influence. And as a result of your influence, your response, your conduct, uh, because Paul writes and invites us to be submissive to, to this leadership that has been placed over us, um, so your behavior, the way you handle yourself, the way you pray for this this particular leader, will maybe maybe the 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 the, the set of actions that turn things around for the leader, as well as for yourself. I don't know if I'm properly answering it or satisfactorily to the person who has asked, because I want to imagine that there's an experience there uh, that has led the individual to ask. Uh, maybe somebody who is who has had experiences uh, following somebody who was difficult to follow uh, could could share, but that's the that's one text that came to my mind uh, when I when I heard Gary's uh, response. Thank you, Doctor Mike. Um, no, thank you, Pastor Andrew. Sorry. Uh, Nompi also has her hand up. Nompi. Yeah, um... Yeah, um, I was going to say pretty much the same thing that Pastor Andrew said, in that um, God calls us to submit in places where we are supposed to submit. So we're supposed to submit to authority. And aside from that, I'm going to maybe go further and say, sometimes we're placed in situations because there's something that you need to learn. There's something that God is trying to teach you. So while it's possible that this person is difficult to submit to, but there is probably a characteristic that is within you that needs to change, you know, that God is trying to mold that you can become more and more like Christ. So I think as Christians, we need to do our part, which is following God's call to us. And in doing so, we open up ourselves to learning more and growing more in Christ. I think that's pretty much it. Amen. Amen. When we expect them to lead, but let us also remember that we have an influence in, in their lives as they have an influence in ours. Anyone who's had an experience in following someone who made it difficult for them to be followed and they overcame? Anyone? Okay. Well, personally, I think I have, but yes, 
praying for them and also just learning how to speak to them nicely made a very big difference in my life. It made it easier for me to submit to what to their leadership. So I believe that that will also work. I will move to purpose. The question is, what should I do when I am stuck? When I don't know what my purpose is? What should I do when I'm stuck? When I feel that I'm stuck, I when I don't really know what my purpose is. Pastor Andrew was to give a presentation on purpose. I, I would I would love for Gary to answer first, and then I will come and uh, share if Gary is okay. ready. Gary, please. <laughs> My pastor, you can go ahead. I will speak after you. I've been speaking a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we are here, Gary. Okay, Doctor Mike. Okay, Doctor Mike is not around. Yes, uh, Pastor Andrew. Okay, let me find uh, a place to stand because okay. I was walking down the road. Uh, but here's what I, uh, what I think. Uh, it's a very interesting place to be uh, where you're feeling stuck. Uh, it's a good place to start. Uh, I like to refer to a text uh, in Psalm. Uh, Psalm 119, uh, verse 5, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Uh, and what that, that text tells me is that there's a light that's showing me where I'm going. But I want to imagine that the technology then wasn't like we have it now, where you have a spotlight that shows you the whole path before you. Uh, it was just enough light for you to see where you're going to step next. Um, so for me, what I did, this is my personal experience. I stood on the word of God that invites me to ask from God if I needed wisdom, uh, that's in James. So I asked God uh, to show me where and trusting that he heard and, and, and had answered, I started to move. Uh, what that looked like is a lot of uncertainty because I couldn't see the end of my journey, but I could only see so, only so far from where I was walking. It's like driving at night with your lights on. You don't see exactly where the end of the road is. Your lights only allow you a certain distance from your car and your car is moving forward at, at a great speed too. Trusting only what you can see in front of you where the lights are, uh, unless you're on full beam and it shows a little further. But trusting that this GPS, God, God positioning system, has given you the right directions, I started moving. Uh, and the revelation of that has been, Andrew went and uh, he left IT to go and read theology. I didn't understand what God was doing. I was like, theology, me? You know, it's a very interesting story. And then I come back home expecting that I would be, I, I would be serving with the church. And then that didn't happen. And then I find myself working with wood. I find myself in, 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 uh, in mental health and psychology. And this is where I'm now serving. And then piece by piece, it now comes, starts coming together. And then I slowly start to understand what the, the entire purpose was. Uh, so where the person is who's asking the question is a very interesting place. Uh, I would say ask God and trusting that he has heard, start moving. What that is going to look like is a lot of uncertainty but move nonetheless because all you're going to be seeing is very few meters from where you are do what you can in that same space and god will continue to reveal himself and continue directing i hope that helps amen amen thank you pastor andrew gary um thank you pastor andrew i, I think we have got too many similarities which is why I wanted you to speak first. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> so uh, let me let me also give you a, a, a personal a personal view into my life as well. So um, as was mentioned in 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 the introductions on the day I was presenting, I, I did my studying and my 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 basically my 
bulk of my career for the past 15 years has been in electrical engineering. But, um, okay, before I continue, just t keep in mind that God opens and closes doors according to what he sees fit. And we need to trust him. So what, what happened some three years ago, I, I, I was on a project in Mozambique and we got into issues about the Sabbath and I was adamant that I, would, I was not going to work on the Sabbath. Uh, it had to do with the power company in Mozambique and that cost me that contract in, in the sense that yes, I finished that part, but the next part that was supposed to happen for the probably the next three years um, they excluded me because I had made it very clear that I would not work, not even to go and sit in the office, even though I'm not doing any work, but just to go and sit in the office so that they can say I was there. I was not willing to do that. And, and um, that cost me that. And after, afterwards, nothing was coming my way. Uh, at some point, I got into a depression because I'm asking God, I, I obeyed you and, and now here I am, which relates to the stuck um, point that was being mentioned in the question. And as Pastor Andrew said, the best place for me was to go to God, um, which is where my crying and my tantrums uh, that I referred to earlier played out. Um, from there, God opened different doors. Um, funny enough, I, I also found myself uh, doing carpentry. Uh, which is why I was saying to Pastor Andrew, we are very alike. I never went to school for that, but it, 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 it sustained me for the longest time. Uh, and again, it was one of those impressions that came out of the silent times with God, like I mentioned earlier on. Um, and he provided the means that I needed to get all the equipment that I needed and the place to do it and the customers. And, and I got an opportunity to be able to meet people I would never have met got to be able to pray with people I never would have prayed with. I got to be able to meet with uh, uh, customers who would then follow my, my, my WhatsApp statuses and, and start asking me about God. So uh, what, what I want to say is when you feel stuck, go to God. When you feel stuck, uh, speak to him because ultimately remember your purpose is not in a position. Your purpose is not in a job. Your purpose is not in a title. Your purpose is not in a great thing that is supposed to happen or you're supposed to do or you're supposed to uh, invent something. That's, that's not the purpose. Ultimately, it's, it's, it's God wants you to be here to be able to spread his love, to, to, to love and be loved. Um, so when you feel stuck, go to God. Uh, and he will show you who you're supposed to reach in the place that you find yourself in. And I like what uh, Pastor Andrew mentioned now about how God does not show you the whole highway. So the closer you get to God, there are times where he's just going to show you the, the place where you can place your next foot. But you need to trust him for everything else, which is why Christ would go and speak to God every morning. So you and I are supposed to do the same. If you can see as far as the, your next step, to take that step and ask him where the other step is supposed to be. And ultimately you end up realizing that God is walking with you every step of the way. And there's nothing as beautiful as that. Yes, the beginning of that process is not fun. And sometimes you start questioning when God takes too long to show you the next step, but shine where you are, do what you can with what you have. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Gary and Pastor Andrew, for that explanation. Uh, on to our last question, I believe, on relationships. I'd address this to Nompi. Um, yes. I dated an SDA guy, great guy, but as we got to know each other, he made it clear that sex was a prerequisite for our marriage. I broke up with him, sad thing. I have met many SDA guys like that. How do we handle that? Are there brothers out there who believe in the same beliefs I have? I'll allow Nompi to answer that. Then you can throw the ball to any of our gents to also give a contribution. And I believe we'll close with that section. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> um, my response is just keep waiting. Um, I, I would like to believe that there are still some good, upright, young Adventist men out there. Uh, because if there aren't any, then that would be really sad. Not for me or not for the person who asked the question, but I think for Jesus, because like his whole mission was salvation and that's part of following God's law, you know. So that would be sad for Jesus and um, directly it would be sad for us as well. Um, so I would just say keep waiting and keep having faith that God will provide because our Father in Heaven is the one that does not withhold anything good from us. So if it's good, he'll give it to us. Um, so if he's withholding something from you, chances are it's not good. And if you haven't met him, chances are he's coming. And even if he doesn't, God's purposes are still for our benefit at the end of the day. So my response would be keep waiting, have faith, um, keep praying. Yeah. Thank you, Nompi. Any 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 of our gents with an answer to that? Gary, Pastor Andrew, Dr. Mike, Timo. Yes, Pastor Andrew. I'm laughing. Um, <laughs> uh, the young man uh, and the young men she has met who are like that uh, could be in need of a, a discipleship journey with, with upstanding uh, male figures in the church for them to understand well. Um, why God said do not and the beauty behind why he said do not. Uh, he doesn't say do not to poop on a party. He understands how good it is. He created it. Uh, but he says do not for good reasons. Uh, so to her, I would say listen to what Nompi said. Uh, keep waiting um, and interact with a lot of people as friends. You know, get to know where people are. Like don't wait until you you are in a dating space to hear what his views are on some of these things. Like, talk about this as strength so that you understand uh, before you get into such a space. But it's unfortunate that there are people who would actually call it a prerequisite. That's a very strong term, a prerequisite. Um, but yeah, keep waiting, keep trusting God and know that God has people. Uh, Elijah thought he was alone. Uh, and only when he was on the run from, from Jezebel did he learn that there were 7,000 others like him who had not bowed down to, to Baal. So she might feel that there are no men. Maybe that limitation of, of her location is what's making her feel this. Uh, she should interact with a lot more people, get out and, and meet friends. And maybe she'll meet somebody who shares in her belief. Because like Gary said, that there are people within the church who are unbelievers in a sense so maybe it's the limitation of our location that makes her believe that um, there are no other brothers who share in her beliefs but god has has people so they will come thank you so much pastor andrew yes gary i can see your hand is raised uh, okay, I put it down, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will comment. Um, just like uh, uh, Pastor Andrew and Nompi mentioned, the key is in the waiting. Um, the key is in the waiting. Uh, wait on God, even though it looks like it's not, <laughs> there, there are none out there, uh, as mentioned. Uh, Elijah thought the same and he was told there were 7,000 more. It's the same thing with us. Sometimes we want things at our own time and which is why we end up getting frustrated thinking there is no one. And, and, and let's remember that uh, the, the, whatever, I mentioned this in the presentation, do not have a, a, a relationship 
status change without God. It, it doesn't matter how pressed you think you are. Uh, yes, people have uh, can tell you that uh, time is running out and what not not. Whichever, remember the one who owns the time or the one who has your plans is, is God. So keep waiting and, and keep trusting God. Then just, just a word to my fellow brothers. Okay, so this thing goes both, both sides. I've experienced the other side of, of things where, where certain women will, will make it very clear that this is something that they want in a relationship. Uh, I like what Pastor Andrew mentioned, where he said, you need to get to know a person out of, out of when you're not in a relationship with them. A lot of us do not wait for that. As young people, we, we rush into this thing and wanting to be uh, exclusive with a person you have no idea about. And, and I've done this several times and I've been beaten quite a while, quite, quite, quite sometimes because of, of this way you don't get to genuinely get to know a person uh, in, in groups, in groups, group circumstances, because I, when you get to know me on a single, on a single me and you scenario, the chances are there are certain aspects of me I may not show you. But when, when we um, find ourselves in group settings with, with no commitment, I'm most probably going to be myself, which speaks to the discussions we have in our group settings. Are we just talking about frivolous things or things that don't benefit us? Or are we talking about things that will show people's characters and build us up? As young people, are we, are we addressing those things that end up helping us to see where we each stand on certain things, which, which, which is something that we need to do? So uh, for my brothers and sisters out there, uh, that step of, 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 of wanting to uh, be involved in fornication, because that's what it is, is, is a bad step. Um, some, some, some of us have scars which will last us a lifetime because of taking that step. So let's not put, be putting pressure on other people and standards that are of the devil on prerequisites that are not God, God's prerequisites. Thank you. Amen. Amen, Gary. Thank you so, so much for that. I believe that that, that was the last question and it marks the end of our Q&A question, uh, Q&A session. Um, thank you. I am extremely grateful to all our speakers. Extremely grateful to all our speakers for finding finding time to join us, finding time to share your having of knowledge with us and for being patient uh, throughout the whole week. We don't take it for granted. And even as we move, uh, we will be having um, a survey or a review of the whole program. The link will be posted here as well as our different groups and shared to us by YouTube as well, if you're not in any of the groups. Uh, please take take some time, take a, a few minutes to just fill it in and be able to just give a response on 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 this, so that we may be able to improve on the programs. I request Holy, thank you Holy for joining us. If you're in a position to bless us with just an item, even as we welcome Dr. Mike to give us a closing piece of this whole week to culminate the whole week. 